Very interesting. Details on these hinge tool racks and more coming up. Hi there and welcome to WB Fun Woodworking. I'm Don. As you can see, all three racks are now hung in the windows behind me. I'm very excited about this project and how I can hang up my tools so that they're handy to use here in the shop. This video is the second in a series of three videos that I'm doing on this project. In the first video, I shared the inspiration behind this project why I have windows in my shop, the fact that I'm putting my workbench over here under the windows and why I'm doing that, why I decided to put windows racks in to put my tools on, and why are they hinged? This video is going to be a little bit more of up close look at them, how the racks were made, how they're hung, how this project came together and how I'll be using it in the future. The third video will be all the construction, how all the cuts were made, how I glued everything up, and how are they attached to the walls. This project actually started at the hardwood dealer. They had these racks of surface four sides wood in alder, poplar, and on the right is oak. I decided that strips of the oak would make perfect racks for my windows. I selected several 10-foot pieces to make my racks out of. This is one of the few scraps I have left over from the wood that I made the racks from. You can see it's solid oak. I selected grain that was straight and tight. I did that for stability. The pieces are two inches wide and a little bit more than three quarters of an inch thick. This is actually the piece that I used to make sure that my half laps were tight and the correct size. Here are the nine rails and six styles after I cut them to rough length on the miter saw. I later cleaned them up on the table saw. Now all 30 of the half laps have been cut on the ends of the boards. On the styles, I need to cut half laps through the middle of those. So this is a test piece that I did so I could set up the table saw to cut the half laps in the middle of the styles. I used half lap joinery to put the rack together. I could have used mortise and tenon or bridle joints, but I figured that half laps were probably the best and the strongest and really the easiest to do. This is a close up of the detail of the half laps that are at the top and the bottom of the racks. I guess instead of half laps, I could have used pocket holes. Um, I decided that half laps were probably one of the strongest joints, if not the strongest joint to use. So that's why I decided to go with half laps. For now, I've decided to put four French cleats on each of the racks in the windows. I have one at the top, two here in the middle, and one down here at the bottom. That may change in the future. I'll have to see how I like this particular arrangement. I've made these so that they can be moved. The French cleats are screwed on, they're not glued. The reason for that is I wanted to build some flexibility into this rack system. And if I decide that the French cleats are too close together or they're too far apart, I want to take one off. I can easily do that by removing the screws, moving it, reattaching the screws. All I'll have left maybe is some holes, but if I don't like those, I could even fill them with dowels. As you can see here, I used my countersink bit and recessed the screw head below the surface so that it won't get in the way of the French cleats if I decide to put a French cleat over there. Um, it'll hang right, right over there all the way to the end. 
I use French cleats for my racks because of the flexibility that it offers. I certainly don't have all the tools that I need out here in the shop. It seems like every time I come up with a new project, I come up with a new tool. Of course, my wife always loves that. You need another tool. She's finally learned that tool acquisition is endless and that I always need another tool. So the French cleats that I have for my tool holders like this are actually flexible as well. I screwed them on, but I didn't glue the cleats onto the back of the tool holders. For example, on this particular tool holder, if I decided I could move the French cleat down to this spot right here, where it's even with the uh, tool holder in the front that holds the knife, and I could cut the top off. So I built a lot of flexibility into even my French cleat system. So yes, you could use any other kind of system that you want. You could screw them right directly to the cross pieces if you wanted to. But I decided that I wanted to use a French cleat system. All three of these tool racks are hinged. I'll use the one in the middle, for example. I have a latch here that I can open. I can open the rack. Um, while I'm here, excuse my back, I'll open the window. And then I can close up the rack and reattach the latch. The latches that I use for this are called sash latches. And they pivot here on the center point. I can open it, close it, and then pivot it back down and it latches very securely. In case you're wondering what latches I use for this, I use these window sash locks. Yes, they're supposed to be used for something different than I use them for, but they work great on this particular project. I decided to go with piano hinges. The piano hinges go from the top of the rack all the way down to the bottom of the rack. I could have used cabinet hinges. I thought cabinet hinges would fit here, but that would take up space on the racks and on the space between the windows. So that was sort of a, not a good idea. The other choice would have been maybe like door hinges that I'd route into the rack and into the uh, wood here. Um, I decided that was a little more difficult to align and I didn't want to do that. Besides, these were already installed and getting a router up here or a chisel up here wasn't uh, something I was looking forward to. And the piano hinges are working out great. They support the rack all the way down. And as you can see, the piano hinges work quite well. I have the rack on the middle window open up all the way so you can see how the hinge is attached. In between the windows, I put um, some solid oak three quarter inch stock that's about 11 inches wide. And I was able to attach the hinges to that board. Now you could use plywood of course, but I decided to use solid oak. Now what's really nice about using these piano hinges is they are actually adjustable. To further explain the adjustability of piano hinges, I've zoomed in on the bottom of this one. These hinges are attached with screws that are at even intervals along the whole length of the hinge. What I could do is detach this rack from this board by taking all the screws out, moving it down one or two or three holes at the top, reattaching it, and then I would have one, two, or three holes down here to drill to put screws in to attach the bottom of the hinge to the board. You may have noticed that there's a plywood spacer between the window frame and the board. I applied this plywood all the way around the windows, sort of as a decorative feature. Yes, I've stained the plywood. I'm not real happy about that, but it looks okay. On that plywood filler strip at the bottom of two of the windows, I attached a power strip. This will give me easy access to power for my tools. Because I have so much space between this board and the window, 
I'm planning on putting my window shades right up here. They'll be above where I can see through the window and out of the way, but I will be able to pull those down at night if I want to pull them down at night. And I can pull them down if I have way too much sun coming in in the afternoon, especially when I'm trying to videotape. So I'm planning to put window shades right up in this cavity up here at the very top. These wide boards are rather unique to my situation. I explained in my first video why they're there, but they've become very handy for putting French cleats and hanging some of my tools. These wide boards between my windows are about 11 inches wide and they're attached to the studs that are behind the wall, behind the drywall with screws. And then I covered up the screws with these pyramid plugs, just sort of a decorative idea. So they're solidly attached to the studs with some long screws. I did the same thing with the narrow boards at the end. These again are two and a half inches wide. They are screwed into the studs that are back behind the drywall in my shop. This is something that you could do in your shop very easily. The boards that the latches and the hinges are attached to is solid three quarter inch oak. I decided on the oak because I thought it looked nice in my shop. I'm a woodworker and wanted something nice to look at. If your shop just has one or two windows like I would have here on this side, you could easily do this project. You don't need a real wide board like I have here. I just use that to fill in the space. You could easily use two and a half inch stock like I have here on the end. You can see that the hinge is attached to it and it's very secure. I've seen a few photos of shops that have real long or wide windows in their shops. They're wider than what I have here, all in one window. You can still use something like this in your situation. What you could do in that situation is you could put hinges at the ends like I have here, and in the middle of your big window, you can put a post, and the post would contain the latches for the two racks. Now, if your window is too long or wide for two racks and you think the racks would be sagging a little bit, you could divide it up like I have here and put a post here and a post here and then put three sections like I just did in mine. The posts wouldn't have to be wide like mine are. They could be narrow like the ones on the ends. I know some of you are out there saying, I don't even have windows in my shop, Don. Why am I watching this? Well, I've seen your tool walls. A lot of you have your tools hanging on a wall and some of those tool walls are now full and you still have tools that you'd like to hang up on your tool wall. You could modify this project by putting a frame around your whole tool wall or just part of your tool wall and double decking it. The frame could be made out of two by four lumber or something like that. You could build off of your tool wall out far enough so that you could do racks that are on hinges like this on your tool wall. And that would add more space for you to hang more tools. I'd like to invite any of you who try something like this to send me some photos. You can find my email address on my website. I'll even post some of the photos that I receive on the website so others can see what you've done in your shop. While I'm here, I thought I'd explain a little bit about the frames around my windows. I'm a woodworker. I love looking at wood. The grain of the wood for me is beautiful. So when I decided to put this project together, I first started with the frame of the windows and I put the top decoration here um, the piece in the center is a silhouette of one of our girls that I've used for my logo. And I decided that I'd put that together and put that in the center of the window up above. It's just something that's fun to look at while I'm out here. I use solid wood rather than plywood. Yes, I know it's more expensive, but I like looking at it. And since it's my shop, 
I guess I can do what I want to do. I do have a side window over here that I've started working on. I haven't finished that. I might even build a rack in that window. I'm not quite sure. But that's something that's down the road. That's another project, <laughs> another video probably is showing you how I did that. So I'm working on that window. I've started, but I haven't finished yet. Just in case you're wondering, this is going to be the view that I'm going to have from my workbench, even with the racks in the windows. It looks really good to me. Now that all the racks are up, I'm looking forward to making some tool holders that I can place on the rack. Things like my chisels are sitting in a drawer that's way over on the other side of the garage right now. And I'd like to put those up here over the workbench so they'll be much more useful to me than they are sitting in a drawer over there. So that's what I'm going to be doing on a lot of the time in my shop is making the tool holders to put on this wall. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up down below. I greatly appreciate the comments and questions I've been receiving. Thank you all very much for that. I appreciate those of you that have subscribed to the channel. And if you haven't already done that, please do that today. And thank you all very much for watching. Over here, there are a couple of videos that you can watch if you haven't watched those already. And those of you that haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can just click on the logo here that's behind me and that'll subscribe you to our channel. Thank you again very much. I greatly appreciate your viewing. Thank you.